Thank you. I'd like four bows, you please. Sure. What filling do you want? I'll take a look. People from the Church of Almighty God are joining our gathering today. You must be alert. If there's any trouble, let us know right away. Okay. There are some brothers and sisters standing guard at all these intersections. Don't worry about your gathering. Here, your bowsy. There you go. Thank you. All right, thank you. This is wonderful. We have such yes, a rare opportunity do. today. Thanks be to the Lord. Hey, look, it's starting. The appearance of God has brought a new age. God's 6,000-year management plan is coming to an end, and the gate of the kingdom has been opened to all those who seek the appearance of God. Dear brothers and sisters, what are you waiting for? What is it that you seek? Do you await the appearance of God? Are you searching for the footprints of God? How the appearance of God is yearned for, and how difficult it is to find God's footprints. In an age such as this, in a world such as this, what must we do to witness the day of God's appearance? What must we do to follow the footprints of God? Such questions are faced by all those who await the appearance of God. You have all considered them on more than one occasion, but with what outcome? Where does God appear? Where are the footprints of God? Have you gained the answers? Many people's reply would be this, God appears among those who follow Him, and His footprints are among us. It's that simple. Anyone can provide a formulaic answer, but do you understand what the appearance of God is and what the footprints of God are? The appearance of God refers to His personal arrival on earth to do His work with his own identity and disposition, and in his inherent method, he descends among man to conduct the work of initiating an age and ending an age. This kind of appearance is not a form of ceremony. It is not a sign, a picture, a miracle, or a grand vision, and even less, is it kind of a religious process. It is a real and actual fact that can be touched and be held. This kind of appearance is not for the sake of following a process or for the sake of a short-term undertaking. It is, rather, for the sake of a stage of work in his management plan. The appearance of God is always meaningful and is always connected to his management plan. This appearance is completely different from the appearance of God's guidance, leadership, and enlightenment of man. God carries out a stage of great work each time he reveals himself. This work is different from that of any other age it is unimaginable to man and has never been experienced by man. It is work that starts a new age and concludes the old age. And it is a new and improved form of work for the salvation of mankind. Moreover, it is work of bringing mankind into the new age. That is the significance of the appearance of God. So that's how it is. Since we are searching for the footprints of God, 
we must search for God's will, for the words of God, for the utterances of God. For where there are the new words of God, there is the voice of God. And where there are the footsteps of God, there are the deeds of God. Where there is the expression of God, there is the appearance of God. And where there is the appearance of God, there exists the truth, the way, and the life. These words are wonderful. They are. While seeking the footprints of God, you ignored the words that God is the truth, the way, and the life. So when many people receive the truth, they do not believe that they have found the footprints of God, and much less acknowledge the appearance of God. What a serious error that is. The appearance of God cannot be reconciled with the conceptions of man, much less can God appear at the behest of man. God makes his own choices and has his own plans when he does his work. Moreover, he has his own objectives and his own methods. It is not necessary for him to discuss the work he does with man or to seek the advice of man much less notify each and every person of his work. This is the disposition of God Amen. and, moreover, should be recognized by everyone. If you desire to witness the appearance of God, if you wish to follow the footprints of God, then you must first transcend your own conceptions. You must not demand that God do this or that, much less should you place him within your own confines and limit him to your own conceptions. Instead, you should ask how you should seek the footprints of God, how you should accept the appearance of God, and how you should submit to the new work of God. That is what should be done by man. Since man is not the truth and is not possessed of the truth, man should seek, accept, and obey. Amen. Amen. Wow, these words are just wonderful. An average person couldn't say these things. These words are full of light. They very clearly explain the path of seeking God's appearance and His work. This is the first time we've heard anything like this. Yes, this is wonderful. It really is full of light. Thanks be to God. Let's read a few passages of Almighty God's words. Great! Everyone, please turn to page three. Almighty God says, He who is God's incarnation shall hold the substance of God, and he who is God's incarnation shall hold the expression of God. Since God becomes flesh, he shall bring forth the work he must do, and since God becomes flesh, he shall express what he is and shall be able to bring the truth to man, bestow life upon man, and show man the way. Flesh that does not contain the substance of God is surely not the incarnate God. Of this there is no doubt. To investigate whether it is God's incarnate flesh Man must determine this from the disposition he expresses and the words he speaks, which is to say whether or not it is God's incarnate flesh and whether or not it is the true way must be judged from his substance. And so, in determining whether it is the flesh of God incarnate, the key is to pay attention to his substance, his work, his words, his disposition, and many more, rather than external appearance. The incarnate God brings to an end the age when only the back of Jehovah appeared to mankind, and also concludes the age of mankind's belief in the vague God. In particular, the work of the last incarnate God brings all mankind 
into an age that is more realistic, more practical, and more pleasant. Amen. He not only concludes the age of law and doctrine, more importantly, he reveals to mankind a God who is real and normal, who is righteous and holy, who unlocks the work of the management plan and demonstrates the mysteries and destination of mankind, who created mankind and brings to an end the management work, and who has remained hidden for thousands of years. He brings the age of vagueness to a complete end. He concludes the age in which the whole of mankind wished to seek God's face but was unable to. He ends the age in which the whole of mankind serves Satan and leads the whole of mankind all the way into a completely new era. All this is the outcome of the work of God in the flesh instead of God's spirit. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Sister, I'd like to read a passage. Okay. When Jesus came into the world of man, he brought the age of grace and ended the age of law. During the last days, God once more became flesh. And when he became flesh this time, he ended the age of grace and brought the age of kingdom. All those who accept the second incarnation of God will be led into the age of kingdom and be able to personally accept the guidance of God. Though Jesus did much work among man, he only completed the redemption of all mankind and became man's sin offering and did not rid man of all his corrupt disposition. Fully saving man from the influence of Satan not only required Jesus to take on the sins of man as the sin offering, but also required God to do greater work to completely rid man of his disposition, which has been corrupted by Satan. And so, after man was forgiven his sins, God has returned to flesh to lead man into the new age and begun the work of chastisement and judgment. And this work has brought man into a higher realm. All those who submit under his dominion shall enjoy higher truth and receive greater blessings. They shall truly live in the light and shall gain the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. Amen. Wow, Almighty God's words sound like the truth to me. They surely come from the Holy Spirit. Now that you've heard Almighty God's words, what do you think? I've never heard such wonderful words. Thanks be to God. As we wait for the Lord's return, we should seek God's footsteps. The Lord Jesus said, He that seeks finds, and to him that knocks it shall be opened. Amen. Amen. In Revelation, it's prophesied, He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Amen. Right. In seeking God's footsteps, we should seek the utterances of the Holy Spirit and seek to hear God's voice. This is the only way we can welcome God's appearance. Yes. Almighty God's words very clearly explain God's appearance and work. And think about it, everyone. If these words hadn't been uttered by the Holy Spirit, would we be able to understand this? We couldn't. Yes, that's right. Outside of God, who could speak this way? Who could reveal these mysteries of the truth? Who could explain the truth and significance of God's appearance so clearly? Only God. Only God. Yes, only God. Almighty God is the Son of Man incarnate, revealing Himself to work and speak. He has expressed many truths and unveiled the mysteries of God's work. Yes. If we can determine that, Almighty God's words are utterances from the Holy Spirit. Everyone, please give this some thought. How does the Holy Spirit speak through a person? Isn't this the Holy Spirit wearing the flesh to speak? It must be. Just like the Lord Jesus, who was the Holy Spirit, realized in the flesh, when he appeared and was working, the Holy Spirit uttered words and bore witness to him. This is no small matter. Yes. When the Lord Jesus appeared and worked, many people heard his words and thought that these words contained authority and power, but they did not recognize him as the Lord. 
Those who recognize him, that he is the Lord, that he is Christ, first had to discover that everything expressed by the Lord Jesus is the truth and things that men cannot achieve. This was the only way they were able to recognize the appearance and work of the Son of Man. But people must pray to God and seek and gain the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit in order to achieve results. That's right. Thanks be to the Lord. Almighty God's words state very clearly how to recognize God's appearance and work. Let's take a look. Great. 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 Almighty God says, The appearance of God refers to his personal arrival on earth to do his work. With his own identity and disposition and in his inherent method, he descends among man to conduct the work of initiating an age and ending an age. Amen. 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 Think back when the Lord Jesus appeared and was working. Didn't he do that by becoming flesh and coming among mankind? Didn't he come with the identity of God himself to express God's disposition? Yes, this happened. This allows us to see a fact. God's appearance and work are practical and significant. It's not as simple as supernatural as we think it is. This kind of appearance is not like when God spoke to Moses through flames or when he spoke to Job from out of the storm or when the Lord Jesus appeared in his spiritual body. To put it accurately, God's appearance refers to God himself coming to earth in the flesh, speaking with the identity of God, expressing truths, expressing his disposition, doing the work of redeeming and saving mankind as well as starting a new age and ending the old age. Yes. From this fellowship, now I understand how God appears. When the Lord Jesus appeared and worked, he spoke and carried out his work among mankind with the identity of God himself. He expressed God's disposition of mercy and love, and he himself was nailed to the cross for man. He did a stage of the work of redeeming mankind, began the age of grace, and ended the age of law. Isn't this the appearance and work of God incarnate coming down among mankind? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Yes. The Lord Jesus has returned in the last days. He is almighty God in the flesh. He speaks, expresses the truth, and expresses God's righteous disposition with the identity of God himself. He is doing the work of judgment beginning with the house of God, and he has come to purify, save, and perfect mankind, bring people into God's kingdom, and end the entire old age. This is God's appearance and work in the last days. Now I see. Yes, God's appearance and work are so real, so practical. We never could have realized that on our own. Thanks be to God. In the past, we didn't know what God's appearance was, and we didn't grasp its significance. We relied on our own notions to define the Lord believing that when he returns, he would descend in a cloud of glory to appear to all peoples. Even after hearing the church of Almighty God bear witness that he has appeared and expressed the truth, we still didn't seek or investigate. We were still waiting for the Lord to descend on a cloud and rapture us into the heavens so that we could meet with him. We have been so blind. I never imagined Almighty God had appeared and had been working for so long that he had expressed so many truths we never saw or heard yes. this. We almost missed the chance to welcome the Lord's return and be raptured before the disaster. Our notions and imaginations are such a trap. We used to gaze at the clouds in the sky and wait for the Lord's coming, but we didn't seek out the words of the Holy Spirit or seek to hear the Lord's voice. That was so foolish. If we hadn't read Almighty God's words today, we would still be feeling our way forward in the dark like blind people. Where else could we hear the voice of God? I wonder. Thanks be to God. Apparently to seek God's appearance and work, we had to actively seek the truth and seek out God's voice. Yes, this is the right path. <laughs> These years, the Church of Almighty God has been bearing witness that the Lord has appeared and is working in the last days. This fulfills the Lord Jesus' prophecy. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him. And I will sup with, with him, and, and he, he with, with me. me. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. 
We've been reading the Bible all these years, but never understood the Lord's words. Yeah. Now, after investigating the work of Almighty God and hearing the voice of God, I finally understand the Lord's prophecies. Yes. This is God's grace for us. It is the leadership of the Holy Spirit and God's blessing. It is. Thanks be to the Lord.